Section two of Up One Pair of Stairs of My Book House. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Margaret Roadheaver. Up One Pair of Stairs of My Book House. Edited by Olive Beaupre Miller. The Cap That Mother Made. A Swedish Tale. Once upon a time there was a little boy named Anders, and he had a new cap. A prettier cap was never seen, for his mother herself had knit it, and who could ever make anything half so nice as mother? The cap was red, except a small part in the middle. That was green, for there had not been enough red yarn to make it all, and the tassel was blue. Anders' brothers and sisters walked about admiring him. Then he put his hands in his pockets and went out for a walk for he was altogether willing that every one should see how fine his mother had made him. The first person he met was a farmhand walking beside a cart loaded with peat and bidding his horse gee up. When he saw Anders' new cap, the farmhand made a bow so deep that he bent nearly double, but Anders trotted proudly past him, holding his head very high. At the turn of the road he came upon Lars, the tanner's boy. Lars was such a big boy that he wore high boots and carried a jackknife. But, oh, when he saw that cap, he stood quite still to gaze at it, and he couldn't help going up close to Anders and fingering the splendid blue tassel. "'I'll give you my cap for yours,' he cried, "'and my jackknife besides.' Now this knife was a splendid one, and Anders knew that as soon as one has a jackknife one is almost a man. But still he would not for all the world give up, for the knife, the cap which mother had made. "'Oh, no, I couldn't do that,' he said. And then he nodded good-bye to Lars and went on. Soon after this Anders met a queer little lady. She curtsied to him until her skirt spread out about her like a balloon, and she said, "'Lad, you are so fine. Why do you not go to the king's ball?' "'Yes, why do I not?' thought Anders. With this cap I am altogether fit to go and visit the king, and off he went. In the palace yard stood two soldiers with guns over their shoulders and shining helmets on their heads. When Anders went to pass them, they both leveled their guns at him. "'Where are you going, boy?' asked one of the soldiers. "'I am going to the king's ball,' answered Anders. "'No, you are not,' said the other soldier, trying to push him back. "'Nobody can go to the king's ball without a uniform.' But just at this moment the princess came tripping across the yard, dressed in a white satin gown with ribbons of gold. "'This lad has no uniform, it's true,' she said. "'But he has a very fine cap, and that will do just as well. He shall come to the ball.' So she took Anders by the hand and walked with him up the broad marble stairs, past the soldiers who stood on every third step, through magnificent halls where gentlemen and ladies in silk and velvet were waiting about. And wherever Anders went, all the people bowed to him, for, as like as not, they thought him a prince when they saw what it was that he wore on his head. At the farther end of the largest hall a table was set with long rows of golden plates and goblets, on huge silver platters were piles of tarts and cakes. The princess sat down under a blue canopy with bouquets of roses on it, and she bade Anders to sit in a golden chair by her side. "'But you must not eat with your cap on your head,' she said, and she started to take it off. "'Oh, yes, I can eat just as well with it on,' said Anders, and he held on to it with both his hands, for if it were taken away from him he did not feel sure he would ever get it again.' "'Well, well, give it to me,' begged the princess, "'and I will give you a kiss.' The princess was beautiful, and Anders would surely have liked to be kissed by her, but not for anything in this world would he give up the cap that mother had made. He only shook his head. Then the princess filled his pockets full of cakes. She put her own heavy gold chain around his neck and bent down and kissed him. "'Now will you give me the cap?' she said. Anders moved farther back in his chair, but he never once took his hands from his head. Then the doors were thrown open, and the king himself entered. 
accompanied by gentlemen in glittering uniforms and plumed hats. The king wore a mantle of blue velvet, bordered with ermine, and he had a large gold crown on his head. When he saw Anders in the golden chair, he smiled. "'That is a very fine cap you have,' he said. "'So it is,' said Anders. "'It is made of mother's best yarn, and she has knitted herself, and every one wants to get it away from me.' "'But surely you would like to change caps with me,' said the king, and he lifted his shining gold crown from his head. Anders said never a word, but when the king came nearer to him with his gold crown in one hand, and the other hand outstretched toward that beautiful cap, then with one jump Anders was out of his chair. Like an arrow he darted out of the hall, through the palace, down the stairs, and across the yard. He ran so fast that the necklace the princess had given him fell from his neck, and all the cakes rolled out of his pockets. But he had his cap. He had his cap. He had his cap. With both hands he clutched it tight as he ran back home to his mother's cottage. "'Well, Anders, where have you been?' cried his mother. So he told her all about what had happened. All his brothers and sisters stood around and listened with mouths wide open. But when his big brother heard how he had refused to give his cap in exchange for the king's golden crown, he cried out, "'Anders, you were foolish! Just think of all the things you might have bought with the king's gold crown! Velvet jackets, and long leather boots, and silken hose, and a sword! Besides, you could have bought yourself a much finer cap with a feather in it!' Anders' face grew red, very red. "'I was not foolish,' he answered sturdily. I could never have bought a finer cap, not for all the king's crown. I could never have bought anything in all this world one half so fine as the cap my mother made me. Then his mother took him up on her lap and kissed him. End of section two. Recording by Margaret Roadheaver.